You're back with America's Forum on Newsmax TV. I'm J.D. Hayworth. And I'm John Bachman. J.D., a lot of folks still talking about that testy exchange uh, between Eric Holder, the Attorney General, and Congressman Louis Gohmert, a senior member of the House Judiciary Committee. Let's recap and uh, show you what happened one more time. And I realize that contempt is not a big deal to our Attorney General, but it is important that we have proper oversight. You, there, buddy. So, you don't want to go there, okay? I don't want to go there? No. About the contempt? You should not assume that uh, that is not a big deal to me. I think that it was inappropriate. I think it was unjust. But never think that that was not a big deal to me. Don't ever think that. Well, uh, I'm just looking for evidence, and normally we're known by our fruits, and there have been no indications that it was a big deal because your department has still not been forthcoming in producing the documents that were the subject of the contempt. You never let me move on. Documents. There have been other you questions you asked you about the, the, uh, the documents that we were prepared to make available then, we're prepared to make available now, that would have obviated the whole need. This was all about the gun lobby and a desire to have a... So we've been trying to get to the bottom of Fast and Furious where people about. died, where at least a couple hundred Mexicans died, and we can't get the information to get to the bottom of that. So I don't need lectures from you about contempt. And I don't need lectures from you difficult. either. Well, there you have it. Now, after this back and forth, the attorney general claimed that no other attorney general had ever had to deal with such mistreatment. The attorney general made the statement... While discussing civil rights at the National Action Network Conference, Al Sharpton's group in New York, his comments were in the context uh, of the ugly and divisive issues he and the president uh, have talked about before, and they've blamed Congress for taking that tack. But his counterpart in that heated exchange, Congressman Gohmert, says the attorney general has no evidence that he's being singled out. Representative Gohmert said Republican AGs like Alberto Gonzalez, John Ashcroft, and Edwin Meese were all... Uh, treated very poorly by Democrats during their tenure, but Gomer did not say the attorney general was playing the race card. And in fact, he noted that Holder never mentioned race in his comments at the House committee hearing. Well, now, joining us to talk about this, one of my old friends who happens to be a candidate now for the Republican nomination for the U.S. Congress from Nevada's 4th District. He's Niger Innes. For purposes of full disclosure, Niger and I uh, served in an advisory capacity to the Tea Party .net over the past couple of years. Now we're in two very different roles. And uh, Niger Innes, we welcome you to America's Forum. It is my pleasure to be on with both of you, uh, in particular with my old running buddy, J.D. Hayworth. Well, Niger, I appreciate that. Let's get to the dispute at hand. The Attorney General, uh, when he's speaking to Al Sharpton's National Action Network, he talks about ugly and divisive things that he and the President have had to contend with. Niger Innes, do you believe Eric Holder was playing the race card? There's no question in my mind that Holder, not for the first time, was playing the race card. And that is just a symptom of a larger disease, J.D. The disease is that Al, what I call Al Sharptonism has become a mainstream political weapon of the Democratic Party. And that goes from the President of the United States to the Attorney General of the United States. It is a disgrace, it is an outrage as a black American that actually has ancestry in slavery. I'm offended because there are real examples, historically speaking, of racism. And the fact that the Attorney General has to uh, come before the House of Representatives at foresight, that is not an example of racism. Now, Niger, uh, obviously, you cite your own heritage, and we should point out you've been a spokesman for the Congress on Racial Equality, or CORE, as you're uh, now a candidate for the U.S. Congress from Nevada. Why is it Eric Holder and the president return time and again to the race card? Well, they have created, uh, if you will, and, and not just them alone, uh, the establishment media has created a racial praetorian guard around them so that they cannot be critiqued, their policies cannot be questioned, they cannot be uh, chastised as presidents of the United States have been chastised going back to George Washington. I mean, my goodness, they had a movie out where the president of the United States was assassinated, uh, the movie about uh, George Bush called Death of a President. 
give me a break. When, when you're in the major leagues, people are going to throw fastballs, and sometimes they're going to throw them at your head. Now, Nigel, I'm thinking back to 2008 here. We were supposed to be entering into a post-racial America with the election of President Barack Obama, but would you say in many ways in 2014 that the racial tensions are maybe even higher than they were back in 2008 or before that? Well, well, I would say there's a parallel track, right? There is the, the politics of Washington, D.C., and the fact that you have the establishment uh, media along with establishment figures within the Democratic Party going all the way up to the White House that use race as a weapon of political mass destruction. But then, on the other hand, you have the American people. And the American people are in a very, very good place. If you look at what's going on within the country at large, you look on college campuses, you look uh, uh, in, in our culture at, at large, we are more integrated society, a more racially colorblind society than we ever have been. It is a tragedy that this is uh, the, the case in spite of the president of the United States, who could have played a major role to uh, move this process along, but he's actually exacerbated racial tension, not, not promoted uh, racial harmony. Niger, uh, just a minute ago, you used a couple of baseball metaphors saying this is the major leagues, you have to be able to deal with fastballs. Well, no doubt you saw the comments earlier this week, a guy who was one of my boyhood idols, Hank Aaron, saying essentially that today's GOP is like yesterday's KKK. Now, when you have someone like Henry Aaron buying into the president's uh, race card rhetoric, how on earth are we ever going to get past this kind of stuff? Uh, it's, it's, it's a real tragedy. You know, the Congress of Racial Equality uh, back in the early 2000s honored Hank Aaron at, uh, at a Martin Luther King Awards uh, dinner. And he's an American hero, not for black Americans, but for all Americans. He's an American hero. And I think, frankly, Hank Aaron is a victim of this demagoguery. And again, I, I use the term again, the Al Sharptonization of the Democratic Party. I mean, Al Sharpton made as a professional tool and, and a default set throwing the race card. Ironically, Al Sharpton has matured over the years and actually doesn't play the race card as much as the President of the United States and the Attorney General do these days. Niger Innes, we'll have to leave it there. Good luck in your campaign for the United States Congress from Nevada's 4th District. We'll have you back again on America's Forum. We'll be back with more. We always want to hear from you. You can reach out to us on social media and find our contact information on Newsmax.com.